So a common theme when we're debugging WebDriver code is that we have to jump between the IDE, the code that we've got in there, set breakpoints, use the debugger, it's very often we're using evaluate, and jump into the browser and use the dev tools on the page we're trying to test. So in this particular test, we have a JavaScript executor being used. That's adding a level of indirection, so I'm not sure where the problem is. This example is based on something that someone sent me via email. So we're just going through this code. I've adjusted it slightly to make it a little bit more suitable for an example. So assume we have this test. It goes off to this page. We find an element. Then we are using JavaScript to change the value of that element. Then submitting the form and checking the value. Nice and simple. If I run it, I can see that the value that I'm setting isn't the one that is coming through. So let's have a look at what is going on. So I'm suspecting that the complexity of the JavaScript executor is giving me a problem, but there's no syntax error. So what can I do? Well, what I could try is maybe it's because I'm setting the value so I can hack about with the JavaScript a little bit. Let's do that. And instead of using value, I'll use uh, set attribute. So let me set the attribute, the value, Add that in and this, what's gone on here. Oh, that's just complaining about this. Let's fix that. There we go. So let me run that and see what happens. Okay, I've got a problem, problems earlier this time. And okay, that's a syntax error. Well, that means that the previous JavaScript didn't have a syntax error. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rewrite this code a little bit to make it more obvious what I'm writing in the JavaScript. So I'm going to have string JavaScript and I'll have the JavaScript executor in a variable as well. Get rid of these brackets I don't need and we want this text up here. Now the reason I'm doing this is that the JavaScript is hard to read when it's split up using concatenation. So I'm just going to make a string dot format percent s and this will become Yes. So that's a little bit easier to read. And it's much more obvious what the syntax error is here. There should clearly be a closed bracket there. And we can see that that is not how you call set attribute. That is how you call set attribute. So let me just try. Oh, mistake in my code. There we go. So let's try that and see if that has fixed it. That's a lot easier to read. Okay, so it's not the value and it's not the set attribute. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to jump into the browser and see what's going on. So this is the page. We've got the number. Default is 12. We're clearly not changing it from the default when it comes through. So let's just inspect the element. I'm going to inspect the element with Firebug here. First of all, I'm going to go in the console and I'm going to try and use the JavaScript that we've got here to change this value. Now to do that, I have to change this a little bit because we don't have driver.findElement in JavaScript. But what we do have are document dot, and there's a whole bunch of get elements. So I'm using the get element by name. So I'll use the get elements by name method. And I want number field. Now driver.findElement finds the first one. So index by zero, that's that one. And let's just check dot value 12. So that's the same as what we're seeing on the screen. That's good. So now let's try and set it. So if I set the value, I'm just going to go straight back to the code that we had, I'm not use the set attribute stuff. So value equals, let's say 15. Let me check. So it's saying it's 15. Let's check the value. Let's get the value from there. And it's 15. So we're setting the value. The only difference is we're not actually seeing that change on the GUI. So something else is going wrong. Let me just check that we're finding the right thing. So if I do get element by name, number field zero, and it's showing me that we found an input type number, 12 number field, that looks good. All right, well, let's go back to first principles. Let's check whether we're actually finding the element. So I'm using CSS locators. So I'll find by name equal, and there's the problem. 
So Firepath is showing me that that locator matches two things. There's two things in this div. So when I did an inspect, hidden in this div here is another form that I didn't notice. So I just did an inspect, figured out the locator, put it in my code. I didn't test that locator and that's my problem. There's two of those. So let's try something else in the console. Instead of the f that one, let's set the second one. And there we go. So I've set the value to 15 and it's changed on the screen. Let's just double check that it comes back. Oops. And there we go. That's what I want to do in the code. So now I'll amend the code to match what I've just done in the console. So I'll go back to the initial code here. Just set in the value equal percent s. Get rid of that. So that's actually fairly readable now. Arguments zero, which is the web element. So what we had in the console was get the element number field dot value equals 15. That's pretty much what we're saying there. Good. So then what I need to do is here we're doing find element to get this. There's two of them. So I'm going to do find elements, then get the second one. And let's run that and see what happens. Okay, that's better. So we were slightly unlucky that there was a hidden form and the hidden form had the same value, same default value as the main form. Had that value been different, chances are we'd have spotted that problem early. But we should have found that problem early because we should have tested our locator early. So the main problem we had is we didn't test our locator early. And one of the reasons for that is I clearly built up a lot of code without running it and executing it as I built it. When we're writing code that isn't tested as we build it with unit tests, we have to make sure that we run it frequently to check that it works. When we're working with JavaScript executor, we need to use the console to get our JavaScript right and check that it's right before we model it in our Java. So we need to put it in the JavaScript console, then model what we've done in the console in Java. So we need to test our locators before we add them in our code by using Firepath or the Google Chrome Find facility. Now, when you're using JavaScript Executor, you do need to learn JavaScript. You do need to learn how to use the JavaScript console, but you saw it wasn't that hard and the console is getting better and better and there's code completion in there and it just makes things a lot easier. So there's an example of taking a block of code, figuring out what's wrong, but using the console to help model and make our code more readable to help us interact and jump between the code and the console.